Good evening, everyone. May Jesus, our Lord, bless us all in those difficult days. Here is Geraldo Lemos Neto. I'm recording at my home in Minas Gerais, Brazil, and Marco Gander also is in his home doing this recording. This is Program to Know Spiritism, number 36, uh, live for Kadek Radio, and also for Spiritism Dissemination, and also for DSN, Discover Spiritism Network. We are continuing to commentate around some of Chico Xavier's messages, especially Emmanuel's message around difficult times. Today, I choose this message that is on the book, uh, The Return Pathway. And the message is uh, Times of Agitation in Curative Dialogue. First, Chico Xavier explained to us before we read the message that his mentor Emmanuel wrote in Uberaba, Minas Gerais, at the Grupo Espírita da Prece, the Prayers Spiritist Group, where Chico Xavier had two, twice a week, two reunions psychographing in public. And so that in this book, we can see the words, first the words from Chico Xavier himself. He uh, wrote, times of agitation. As we started our public meeting, the gospel according to spiritism showed us item six from chapter nine, which elicited great observations. Those who took to speak reminded us of the present state of agitation in the world today. So this is pretty much nowadays, right? Because we are living nowadays these great times of agitation. So, so that this message can very well be for all of us. Then Chico Xavier uh, wrote, they brought it topics, they brought it topics of current misunderstandings and irrational antagonisms, which create difficulties in general relationships. And they also brought into discussion the lamentable cases in which simple clashes of opinions foment savagery and delinquency. So this is very much for nowadays, for our time, because we are seeing this, this irrational antagonisms everywhere, here in Brazil, there in the United States, there in the United Kingdom, in Europe, everywhere. And all discussions are situated in this lamentable cases in which simple clashes of opinions may generate and fomentate savagery and delinquency, as Chico Xavier himself told or wrote to us. At the end of our activities, our dear friend Emmanuel wrote the page that I am sending to you with wishes of seeing it published in the Diary of Sao Paulo. Next, 
to your clarifying commentaries. Chico Xavier was addressing Professor Herculano Pires, that had a column at the journal uh, Diário São Paulo, the São Paulo Diary. And at that time in the 70s, uh, Chico uh, always explained the, the surroundings, the ambience of the, the meeting, the spiritist meeting that he had at the spiritist group of the, pray, the prayer. And after that, he sent also the message that he received from his mentor, Emmanuel. And at that time, Professor Herculano Pires also published in this column, in this uh, Sao Paulo Diary co column, his comments around the, the theme. And Chico Xavier closed his explanations writing, on behalf of the, of the companions here and myself, I remain deeply in your debt for your constant attention to our petitions. Yours truly, Francisco Candido Xavier, Chico Xavier. He was, uh, of course, saying about the times of agitation. And then we can see how fortunate we are to receive this message that is from his mentor, Emmanuel, because it so much implies to all of us the situations of living that we are facing nowadays all over the world in this coronavirus crisis. And most of us on earth now are living in quarantine in our homes, in, uh, in the perceiving of uh, social distance to confront the spread of this virus. And so that many of us must be patient, must be calm in tranquility of mind and soul, uh, understanding that all crises are transitory and facing the reality of our souls that we need to get together and pray, that we need to understand our limitations, that we need to maintain our faith and our hope in the higher spirits, in Jesus Christ our Lord, and in God himself, that is presiding all kinds of trials and obstacles and experimentals, experimentations of of life on, on earth. And because of that, many of, the, of us, of course, are having problems, are having anxieties, are having anguish, are having problems at, uh, uh, at home with our relatives and, and families, members. And so that this message is right to the point that we need to listen so that I, I chose that message to bring to all of you. And the message is entitled Curative Dialogue. Just the title is a message, Curative Dialogue. And Emmanuel wrote, Observe the extension of human suffering and make your speech into an instrument of relief and peace. Are we doing this? Are we let our speech 
be an instrument of relief and peace? Because if not, we are in the wrong pathway. We must readjust our speech to so that he, it can be an instrument of relief and peace. Emmanuel wrote, you will find in firm individuals of the soul around you appearing from every place, some with psychological maladjustments from other existences, presenting obscure traumas in the mental fields. Others who could not fulfill their commitments and who now wander in this world of self-loathing. Desperate others who walk the fine line between delinquency and a productive life. And the afflicted ones, almost all of them tied to process of anguish. So he is showing us that the, the people most close to us in our families or in our friends, friendship relationships, we can see that there are some, there are some of them that, are, that have a troubled mind, psychological maladjustments, and the ones that could not fulfill their commitments at home, at family, at uh, the work. Others that uh, stay in this fine line between delinquency and a productive life. And most of them, the afflicted ones, all of them tie to the problems or process of anguish. They are all infirm individuals of the soul who must be medicated first and foremost with a curative dialogue. So here Emmanuel is showing us our responsibility as Christians, as spiritists, we must give them our most important, our forefront, first and foremost uh, medication with a curative dialogue. Let's talk to them in a curative way. At home, have compassion with your relatives and try to radiate the light of understanding that might establish tranquility and safety. So in this time that most of us are, are stranded at our home, at our own homes, let's address our relatives and family members radiating them with light, with the light of understanding, establishing tranquility in their minds and safety in their souls. Emmanuel proceed. In the workplace, as much as possible, transform yourself in a cleanser of bitter confidences, substituting goodness for incomprehension and blessings for acrimony. In public manifestations, select concept, concepts that promote ideas and opinions so you may not stimulate violence or discord and 
in public places, mobilize solidarity and kindness, decreasing the tiredness and loneliness felt by the companions who bear conflicts and trials that you might perhaps ignore. So our responsibility does not stay only in our homes with our family and relatives. We also have the responsibility to have a curative dialogue with our companions at the workplace. Uh, giving them goodness instead of incomprehension, blessings instead of acrimony. And in our public manifestations, we must select all of our words and thoughts and sayings and actions, stimulating peace, and tranquility, concord, and love. We must not select the ideas or opinions that stimulate violence or discord. Because we need to understand that we have a place on earth, on our society, in our society, and in, in, in our responsibility is to mobilize solidarity and kindness so that we can actually contribute to the decreasing of the tiredness and loneliness of our fellow companions and brothers and sisters so that they can bear their conflicts and trials and surpass them with strength and comfort. Emmanuel proceeds, do not carry your speech with fulminating vibrations when surprised by the intemperance of others. Otherwise, Besides not curing the infirm, you will become even sicker yourself, especially under circumstances when facing particular adversaries or supposed aggressors. Again, he is stating that we must control what we say what we transmit, the ideas, the actions, the thoughts and words that came, came from our mouth through our speech, they must be in tranquility vibrations. They must be in peace so that they can transmit peace and tranquility to others. Then I wrote, place yourself in the other person's situation and imagine how your reactions would be if someone spoke to you with bitterness and lack of consideration. So we must always, in all the difficult situations, put ourselves in the place of the others, especially in the place of the aggressors or in the place of the adversaries. And we certainly will understand that maybe they carry trials and conflicts that perhaps we all ignore. So that let's understand the others so that we can understand ourselves. If we make peace with the others, with our brothers and sisters, we will have peace inside our minds and souls. Emmanuel proceed. 
The denser the clouds in the environment, the deeper the mental imbalances around us. So this is a physics thing. The laws of physics in the spiritual world is that if the environment around us are in density of clouds, negative thoughts, negative feelings, of course, we can comprehend that the mental imbalances around us are deeper. The more dissonance embraces us, the more necessary it is for us to elicit a curative dialogue capable of suppressing infirmities and obsessions at their incipients. So if we can see or feel the, that uh, a vibration of dissonance is coming towards us in our families or in our workplaces or even at the social uh, thing, at the meeting. Uh, if we feel that, it is the time for us to choose a curative dialogue, a curative dialogue, so that we can suppress all infirmities, all anguish, all sufferings, all misunderstandings, all obsessions that might be in their incipient uh, beginning. So we can act like the firefighter uh, having the water to stop the fire. Regardless of the circumstances you find, blend your words with kindness and understanding. We must always choose the words of kindness and understanding. That's what a curative dialogue is. That is the path that spiritism, the spiritist doctrine and the gospel of Jesus uh, inspire us to do. Emmanuel then wrote, we all know that sufferings, tears, and fires of dissent and tribulations are all abundant on earth, especially in those times of crisis, right? We can see all over the world, the tears, the sufferings, the fires of dissent, struggles, tribulations, trials all over the, the world, in every nation, in every country, in every city, we can see this happening today. The Lord, however, does not expect from us any miraculous formulae that will immediately extinguish the fires of agitation. However, wherever we are and with whomever we are, He, the Lord, asks us to provide a glass of cold water. So, Emmanuel concludes his message that we all are entitled by our Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this very significant work
relatives, companions at workplace, or even in the public places, we can and must provide them with a glass of cold water in a sense, in a spiritual sense, that this cold water of tranquility and peace is, is not a miraculous formulae that will resolve all of their problems and sufferings and anguish and trials and conflicts, no but will give them a peace, a moment of peace of mind so necessary for them as for us that we all can be in peace and tranquility in those times of agitation. That is the message that I brought to, to us, Times of Agitation by Chico Xavier, and curative dialogue by his mentor, Emmanuel. On behalf of, of all of us at the Portal Saber Espiritismo in Brazil and the Grupo Espírita Saber Amar and Casa de Chico Xavier de Pedro Leopoldo, we salute everyone with this important message by the spirit of Emmanuel in those times nowadays of great agitation at great misunderstandings, conflicts, trials. And we must conclude that the pathway of truth and love that Jesus himself gave us by his examples 2,000 years ago is the only way we must seek the way of tranquility and peace in our minds and souls. So may God help us all in this objective. Thank you so much. See you next week. <laughs>